Live from the virtual lounge in cyberspace, it's Beats and Eats. A happy hour for the mind, featuring the best in conversation and pop culture, food, music, movies, comedy, you name it. And you'll never know who will be dropping by to pay us a visit. And what would a show be without a host? Hey, we've got two, Ty Ray and Nick Gelso. The virtual lounge is open. It's Ty Ray. It's Nick Gelso and bartender Scott Mitchell. It's Beats and Eats. So glad to be with you today, Nick and I, talking about the movie Manchester by the Sea. Now, why you ask? Because Nick and I actually don't get to the movies that, that much. <laughs> as much as and we used to. I love this movie, Nick. I, I saw it uh, about three months ago, and I was waiting for you to see it so I could get your reaction, and now you can see it at home on streaming. I think you saw it, what, you see it on Netflix, Amazon Prime? Amazon. I paid full price, damn it. Paid full price. I'm a big fan of this movie. I love Casey Affleck. I have since... I, I actually think he's more talented than uh, brother Ben Affleck. He, he definitely. He doesn't have, I think that Ben... Ben really got had the ability to ride the Matt Damon wave, and yes. that the duo did wonders for him. Plus, I think he's a Ben is a a bit better looking. Yes. Um, I would say that uh, his brother Casey is more like, dude. I I I really could see myself pulling up to a gas station and him pumping the gas. Like he's just an average <laughs> guy, right? Well, right, right. In Manchester by the Sea, he's playing a handyman. Right, I mean, the film. it seems as if his life kind of disintegrated after his, his, and of course there are spoilers in this episode, but after the uh, the death of his children, right, that he pretty much right. caused. Right, because of his drinking and partying at his home, and basically the film, it, it, from my perspective, is it a, is about a man trying to forgive himself and get forgiveness for others for this horrible tragedy that killed his family other than his his wife who survived uh played by michelle williams she uh-huh. survives and a great scene in the film is when the two connect again uh-huh. Uh-huh. again and she states her love for him and he's trying to move on nick very powerful scene very powerful film that honestly at my age and with so many things gone on in my life, now I haven't had nearly the tragedy that the character in this film, uh, Lee Chandler, has gone through. But I could certainly relate to it as a male. You know, the towns <laughs> of life, the tragedies of life. It's funny that you say. Funny that you say that. I felt so many relatable moments in that in that movie. I mean, even with my. I mean, let's face it. The movie itself is about his relationship with his brother, who has very few right. scenes in the movie. I mean, that's what it really all comes down to. So anybody who has a sibling, um, and I'm, uh, you know, unfortunately in this movie, that's a good his, point. his older brother passed away. But any living or dead, anybody who has a sibling, there's that. Like I sense that they 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 clearly he did not want the kid, but you do anything for your brother, no matter right. how distant or how argumentative you may be towards one another or combative uh you know when it comes down to it you'd walk through fire and 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 i got it was so relatable in so many ways right wasn't it i mean it was just and i think that that's a testament too to to casey affleck as an actor because he's just an average joe i I liked it a lot nick and i I liked the kid too played by lucas no me too plays the character patrick what a great character oh great kid a uh, great character. He plays the the son of Joe, who passes away in the film, played by Kyle Chandler. And Casey Affleck, played by, who plays Lee Chandler, has to take on the kid, right? He's got to be the guardian. And Patrick doesn't really – <laughs> I love it because Patrick doesn't give a shit <laughs> about, about uh, Casey Affleck's character's feelings. He's got – hockey practice go, to go to he's got dates to go on hey man get over your shit yeah the dude's obs- i love it i mean t- typical 16 year old to- who wasn't completely obsessed with uh ways of getting not getting caught getting laid at that point uh oh, absolutely. you know and uh and that was pretty much his mission in all this right and i think that was part of the grieving process with his losing his father but what a great great character that was uh just they they played off each other wonderfully um yeah i mean i think that i've I've heard obviously we've heard so much about the film 
throughout 2000, the end of 2016, now the beginning of 2017. I think it lives up to the billing. The end, tie, and again, I said there's spoilers in here, but the end was kind of abrupt, and I actually had to rewind it yeah, to see if anything happened that was, you know, because nothing yeah, monumental happened. It was anticlimactic. Together, right? They don't end up together. right, right. They don't end up together, but they went on this journey together, and I think they, they helped heal one another. Right. The kid suffering from the loss of his father and he's trying to fit in and he goes and stays with his biological mom, who is a recovering drug addict and turns into a what a religious. Oh, my God. And how creepy was Ferris Bueller, Matthew Broderick. Oh, so creepy. 